Hello everyone, welcome to Three Ring Circus. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. And I know what some of you may be thinking, but you just did a video on Ubisoft games. I know, I know. And it would be ridiculous for me to make another video right after I just made a video trashing on Ubisoft games, right? No, but seriously guys, I just kind of wanted to go over some of the good and the bad things that I experienced playing the open beta over this weekend. Now, keep in mind, I'm running my PC, or it ran on my PC at ultra graphics quality and the texture quality was set to high. So, you know, your experience may vary, especially if you're on console. I, I really don't know how that plays, I didn't bother. But yeah, let's, let's get into the first thing. And that's uh, this random guy that pops up. I don't know who he is. I'm not familiar with Ubisoft staff or anything like that. So I don't know who he is, but he pops up. He's talking out of a teleprompter in sort of a robotic way. Um, it's really annoying. I don't, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg or, or something. I, I don't know. But when, once you get past that shit, you're immediately greeted by the friendly pre-order screen where they're trying to talk you into pre-ordering the game. And... To me, I think that's bullshit. You haven't even played the game yet, and they're already trying to force a pre-order on you. This is the same kind of shit I talked about in my last video, sort of. And I think that that's kind of bullshit that they do that. I get it that they do that every time you launch the beta, but I don't, I don't think that's right. I think that if you really enjoyed the game, if the game, you know, actually was good enough then you would find a way to pre-order it without them having to splash that screen on you every time you start up the game. So, once you get past that, you go to the character select screen where you can customize a character and everything. I don't really get into that, but I know a lot of people do, so that's cool. Um, but after that, when you actually get into the game, you are greeted with stunning visuals. I mean, like I said, my graphics quality is on Ultra, but still, like... I was really impressed that an open world game had such beautiful graphics. Um, running at 60 FPS, it just looked gorgeous. And I don't say that about a lot of open world games because I'm really critical about textures and things like that. But I mean, the trees, the mountains, the rocks, the, the water, uh, the NPCs, even your player model, just everything looked good as far as textures go. However, what I did notice is the textures on the vehicles seemed a little shitty, but I understand that because that's more interactable. It, you know, vehicles take damage and bend and contort to different ways depending on, you know, how they crash and how much damage has been done to them or bullet holes and things like that. So I get why that would look more cartoony, but yeah, everything else looked pretty fucking spot on. Uh, while we're talking about vehicles though, um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't like the the way they drove. I, I'm glad they gave you such a wide variety. And I didn't get to play the game too much this weekend, but I know they gave you a pretty good selection of vehicles from what I noticed. And I thought that was cool. I mean, you definitely want that in an open world game. But they drove like dog shit. And what I mean is the dirt bikes just felt like slippery and when you're trying to move the camera angle around it doesn't really snap back to the back of the car so you know you end up wrecking a lot which I did you might not but I did and I understand that maybe the game isn't all about driving but the way they do the environment and how far apart like destinations are and everything you're kind of hoping for a better experience to get from one place to another especially when you know the environment is so gorgeous you want to be able to move around it you know smoothly but I, I didn't get that experience uh, let me know if you did because I didn't it, everything felt like clunky garbage no matter which vehicle I was in um, but maybe I just didn't use the right vehicles I just used the ones they gave me and it felt like shit uh, speaking of that helicopters now I was able to get from one point to another you know fly to my destination in a helicopter I don't know how the fuck I did it, and I, without crashing, I don't know how I could replicate that experience again. It was just mind-boggling at how shitty the controls were. Um, maybe because I'm playing on a keyboard, but 
I felt better controls on a keyboard with other games like GTA and Just Cause 3, and there was no reason for them to make the controls so fucking wonky. But they did. I didn't make the game, they did, so whatever. I'm just letting you know what my opinion is. I, I think the helicopters are garbage. Um, maybe there are better helicopters, but I don't, I don't think they would control any differently. I think that's just the way it's programmed, so there's that. But, I mean, it's not the worst thing. It's not game-breaking, but it's really annoying to try to get from one place to another. I mean, you're better off running. And that's all you do. I mean, you can't jump. So, well, you can kind of jump to slide over things, but you can't jump. At least not that I found out. But with that being said, let me talk a little bit about the guns. Or at least the few guns I did get to play with while this open beta was going on. I thought that they were great. I enjoyed them. They felt satisfying. The audio sounded great, at least through my headset it did. Um, I thought that the hit detection on NPCs was perfect. I mean, spot on. I never had any problems shooting somebody in the head and them not dying. Whether it was a civilian or an enemy. However, the AI seems a little funky with the enemies. Sometimes you'll be shooting and you'll be in a firefight outside of a building or something like that and you'll mow down a few enemies and then you'll go inside and find a few enemies that are just standing there with their backs turned like they didn't hear everything that was happening 10 feet away which I find to be kind of immersion breaking but I don't know I mean you guys let me know what you think about that that's kinda that's kinda fucked up even if you're using silenced weapons if you guys know anything about actual silencers they do not silence guns. So you would definitely hear it from 10 feet away. You would hear all the yelling and commotion and shit like that. So I don't know if this had something to do with me playing on the difficulty setting regular. Maybe if I cranked it up, they would be a little bit more attentive. But yeah, I would say that uh, my overall experience with that is when that happened, I felt a little neglected, to say the least. Another thing I do like about this game is the chickens. Yes, the chickens. And that's when you shoot a chicken, it just vaporizes. It just blows up into a ball of feathers and rains down like confetti. I think that is awesome. It's completely unrealistic, but sometimes instant gratification is more important than reality in video games. So, small detail, but it's the small details that I actually look at in games, especially during open betas and things like that. In conclusion, I don't think that I would pre-order this game or spend $60 on it in any universe. I think that the price should be probably around $40 for this game. It does have some redeeming qualities, that's why I'm saying that the price should be even that high. But, you know, what's the guarantee that you buy this game for $60 and it's not irrelevant in a month? I mean, look what happened to For Honor. That game was relevant for a few weeks. I mean, that game started losing relevance before it even came out. So what's the guarantee that you're going to pay $60 for this game and it just won't lose relevance? I mean, it will eventually, but goddamn. I mean, For Honor, like, I bet a lot of people that bought that game wishes they would have saved the money to buy this game. But if you save the money to buy this game, like, and you bought this game, what, what, what are you going to do when the next Ubisoft game comes out? in like a month or two. So, I don't know, it, it almost seems like Ubisoft is hurting itself and needs to call like a self-harm hotline or some shit because <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Anyways, if you guys disagree or agree, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm just, I don't know what to say about this. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.